Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have another interview from an industry professional. Today we are looking at production again. So here's an interview with a production controller at Hachette Children's. Um, so I work as a production controller at Hachette Children's. Production are involved from the big, right from the very beginning until the very end. This starts off with running acquisition costings for the acquisition meeting. An acquisition meeting is a meeting that includes a few departments such as editorial, finance, production, sales, uh, where they decide whether the book is going to make any profit and if it's going to sell well. So they take a look at the production estimate, which has been run by the controller, which includes all the costs for the first impression that would include client costs. So that's printer costs and also any origination costs. These may include the editor might have sent it out for copy edit, so we've got to pay the copy editor. Or maybe the cover has been freelanced out, so we need to pay the freelance designer. Um, we will also account for typesetting. Um, yeah, so these all these costs are added into this first estimate, which they take a look at. So then, obviously, at the very end of the book journey, we send the book to print and then we get advances, which is always a fun part. But my day today varies. Um, at the same time, I'm working on about, oh, I don't actually know how many, but quite a lot of titles at the same time. And they all may be at different stages. So maybe one minute I'll be checking the cover for one and then sending it to repo for proofing. And then the next minute I'll be sending text to typesetters for another title and then sending ebooks to conversion for another. Um, maybe I'll be costing because we do acquisition costings, budget costings and finals costings for each title. I might be scheduling or maybe I'm sending titles to print at the very end. Um, but we also work in co-editions, which is quite fun. So we work with foreign publishers on, um, on some of our titles that we've printed that they then want to take on. So we'll send that to print for them. So we're liaising with the printer and with the foreign publisher. We're like the middleman, um, which is quite good. So um, I studied English literature and literature in a world context at the University of Aberdeen. At the end of my undergrad, I had absolutely no idea what I was going to do. And one of my friends told me about a publishing master's in Edinburgh. So I applied to that. But I think actually she was moving to Edinburgh. So she just wanted me to come with her. But anyway, luckily they accepted me and I absolutely loved the course. I think when I was there, I just knew that it was the right thing for me. Um, but during this course, they encouraged us to do a lot of work experience. So I did some work experience with an Edinburgh based author where I did her social media and her marketing stuff, like all her Twitter and all that kind of thing. And I also volunteered at some book fairs, um, the Radical Book Fair in Edinburgh. But then I did a two week internship at Ebury in the marketing department. And I think I did a lot of my work experience quite, mar it was quite marketing heavy because the course was quite marketing heavy. And I felt like I, I didn't really know anything else, which is a bit of a shame. And actually now I, I wish that I'd known more about production or more about rights because I think they're quite weak when it comes to courses. Anyway, when it came to actually applying for jobs, before my course actually finished, a production role came up at Canongate uh, for a production assistant. I wasn't really ready to leave Edinburgh yet and I loved Canongate's list, so I applied and got the job. I was there for about two years and I absolutely loved it. Um, production is where I learn on the job, as I think all departments in publishing are really. Um, and because it wasn't a big publisher, I was given more responsibility quite quickly. I was working on frontless titles within a few months and I was controlling the digital side, which was a lot of fun. Um, having my own like side of things, like I think it was quite motivating for me to feel like I was actually progressing in the job quite quickly. Um, but I think the thing is, working in Edinburgh, I knew that eventually I was going to have to move to London. Um, Canongate is the biggest publisher in Scotland. Uh, so why would, I, I think I felt like, why would they move anywhere else? Because, and how is there going to be any room for me to progress if no one else is moving anywhere else? So anyway, moving to London was definitely the right move for me. And I think I knew it from the beginning of my career that it was going to happen eventually. Five o'clock. <laughs> I'm only kidding. My favourite thing about production is working with all the different departments in the publishing house. So we work with editorial and design on the cover and the text. We work with sales when it comes to special sales and reprints. We work with rights for co-editions, finance for all the invoices, marketing and publicity for proofs and advances. Um, I think that's all the departments. Um, but on top of that, we're also working with external suppliers. So we're working with printers, 
and they're national and international. We're working with shippers, EBIT converters, typesetters, freelance designers, paper suppliers, foreign publishers, warehouse staff, and it goes on and on. Um, I think working in this role, you have to be like a people person. You have to be, you know, everyone's helping each other out. If, if the ship's delayed and you need to, I don't know, fast track it, you know, you need to have a good relationship with your shipper. Or if maybe you've messed up an invoice and it's printed already and you need the printer to maybe help you out a little bit, they'll do that if you've got a good relationship with them. Um, yeah, but I really like that part of the job. The most challenging part of my job, I think variety is a, a pro and a con. You know, you're juggling all these titles all at once, all at different stages. You're working over several lists. I think I work over four lists and there are lots of work in progress meetings to attend and you have to keep on top of everything. Um, and that's quite challenging sometimes. You've got to be really organized. You need to kind of know where everything is. Um, and sometimes one of my lists might demand more attention than the others. So I neglect them a little bit. And then when it comes to those like, work in progress meetings, I'm like, oh, but um, yeah. So that's a pro and a con, I guess, because I do like the variety as well. Um, and I guess the work in progress meetings are quite good because that's when if anything is going late or anything is getting, you know, fallen behind, it's flagged in that meeting. So everyone's helping you out. But yeah, you do need to make sure you've got everything under control. OK, what meetings do I usually have? You know, when I was in the office, I actually didn't really like having the meetings, but I think working from home now, I look forward to them quite a lot. We have um, WIP meetings, so they're work in progress meetings. Um, these are meetings that include all the relevant production controllers for that list, the editors and the designers. <clears throat> During these meetings, we run through all the titles in that list and check that everything's on track for everything. Um, any issues are flagged and actioned after this meeting. We also have a production teams meeting. So um, we just discuss any issues that we've had with printers or with shippers or anything. And um, we also discuss like scales costs. So um, printers and publishers have, um, they, they negotiate scales costs, which is uh, the cost of every kind of basic format and uh, page extent and finishes. And so that when we go to cost a title, we can just look at the scales instead of going to the printer and asking them to give us a cost. It's a lot easier on both sides. Um, so we discuss that. We also show advances for new titles because um, we get we've been getting some delivered to our homes, which has been quite fun. Production also goes to co-edition meetings where we run through the list of titles that are printing for the foreign publishers. Um, the rights team and the production team are included in this meeting. And we just run through the titles and check that everything's on track. Um, and I think the good part about the co-edition meeting is the rights contact, they're always CC'd into the emails, but production are allowed to liaise with their foreign publishers themselves, which um, is always quite fun, I guess, having someone else to talk to in your day. Who do I contact most often? Hmm, that's a hard one. I feel like I am always messaging everybody all the time, but I think I'm most in touch with the printers. Um, most of my titles are colour titles, so these are printing in um, internationally, so in China mainly. Um, and it's a bit annoying because they will work to different time zones, so usually in the morning they're still online. So I come in in the morning and I've got like 20 emails from China, which I then go through and reply to, but I'm not going to get a reply until the next morning when they're back online. So it's a bit of a shame um, because we don't get, you know, you can't sort something in the same day, you need to wait. Um, yeah, but on a day to day, it feels like I'm in touch with absolutely everybody, printers, ebook converters, shippers, editors, designers. Um, I think they're mainly the bunch that I'm talking to all the time. So for my first job at Canagate, it was good to have Photoshop and InDesign knowledge, but um, but since being a Hachette Kids, you don't need that at all. You just need to know, I guess, spreadsheets and you need to know um, Adobe, so PDFs. Um, just make sure you know your way around them. Basic maths is useful, but it's not a necessity. I think I struggled with maths at school and somehow I'm getting by on this job just fine. So you don't need it, but I mean, it's handy to have. Um, but I think the most important skill is being organised. So you're balancing so many things, as I've said earlier. At the same time, you need to be able to do that and be comfortable with it and not let it stress you out. 
I mean, the thing is, at the end of the day, we're working on books. It's not like we're not saving lives. We're not doing anything that's going to change the world. It might change the world. But, you know, you just need to make sure that you can you can handle your your like all your, your load, basically. I think a lot of people don't actually know what production is exactly. I didn't until I first got the job. Um, as I said earlier, my course wasn't production heavy or production anything um, at all. So that was a bit of a shame. I think being a student going in and learning about production is, you know, you've got to find the information for yourself. Um, but I think the thing that people don't know about production is that they have a creative input into titles as well. So the designer may have an idea of what they want, you know, finish wise and production can help give suggestions of finishes and they can liaise them with the printer and how the cover and the text can look good while ensuring it's feasible at the same time. And then they'll go back to the designer and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll discuss it together. Um, so production aren't just, you know, the, 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 the costing schedules, people, they do, they are creative too. So Hachette has got a lot of employee networks. So um, these include Thrive, the Accessibility Network, Multi-Faith Network, Gender Balance, Wellbeing, All Together, Pride, etc. Um, these groups organise events, book clubs and make changes within the company. I think the best thing about this is, you know, as well as obviously their, their aims throughout the year, you're also meeting people throughout the company and other branches. Like I'll meet people at Headline or Hodder or just elsewhere. And it's not just, you know, I'm not just working with people in Hachette Children's. I'm getting to know everybody else as well. And um, I can't even remember when it was now because all the months are blurring in together. But they, when we were in the office, uh, we before the lockdowns and COVID happened, we had like a um, change in the story day. So they had basically every floor had like food and then like bits and bobs of what they're doing. And you could just go and walk around all the floors. Everyone was walking around and just chat to people and eat bits of food, pick up some books, get some proofs, just just see what's going on really in the rest of the company. And that was that was a really good day. And there was talks going on and the networks were talking about what they were up to. And, um, and there were some panels happening and that was just a really good day during the work day as well. So um, that was really good of the company to do that. The publishing industry is really fun to be in. I think everyone's so engaging and with one another on Twitter and I love being a part of that. Uh, everyone's really keen to help others in the industry or people get into the industry. So there's a, um, there's a group called the SYP, which is a Society of Young Publishers. And last year I was the head of events and we arranged like a conference for, it was called um, Turning the Page. That's bad that I couldn't remember that. But it was called Turn the Page and it was basically a whole week of, of evening panels. We had two panels a night and it was quite good. And it was to help people getting into the, so like publishing hopefuls, but also for people that were already in the industry and wanting to, um, to, to ask for promotions or pay rises or just progress or maybe even change department. And I think, you know, the amount of people that, that, that took part and it was an unpaid thing and they took part and they were really keen to and happy to and people were promoting it and that was just really fun and I think it's a really good industry to be a part of. Everyone was just trying to help each other out, which is what you want, really. Um, so I'd say pay attention to books. So, and I know that's an obvious one, but what I mean is pay attention to the look of the book, pay attention to the cover, pay attention to what the finishes are, pay attention to, um, I don't know, the feel of the book, the binding of the book, you know, does it have head and tail bands? Does it, has it got foil? Has it got spot? What does it have? How does it, you know, does that make it, does it have an impact on you really? So I think the two production interviews that I've had, they have had books in front of me on the table and they've asked me to talk about the book. And I think the mistake that some people have made is that sometimes they talk about the content they don't want to hear about the content in production. They want to hear about the look of it. So just be aware of that when you're going into an interview. Um, but my first, my first interview, they had two books. They had like a the hardback, which was like gifty and and it was finished heavy, and I think it was color as well. And then they had the paperback version of it, which was exactly the same, but it was I think it was matte only. It was black and white. They changed the the images um, to make it a wee bit cheaper for the paperback. And they asked me to talk about it, and I had no idea about finishes. I just, I remember being like, that one's shiny and uh, and that's nice. And they were just like, yeah. And, and what, do, what does that shiny, what does that make you, does that make you pick it up? And, you know, blah, blah. Obviously now I know that's spot UV, but at the time I didn't. So maybe it'd be good to to read up on finishes and read up on, 
the production side of things. So what one book should everyone read? Um, last year I read this book, it's called Betty by uh, Tiffany McDaniel and I just picked it up at work because they had tons sitting there because no one was working in the office anyway um, and they were giving them away basically and I kind of thought oh I'm not going to read that as massive. I mean it's it's all right it's a normal size but I um, I picked it up because I bought some copies for my friends and sent them out to them. I thought if I send that to them then I'm definitely going to read it because then I need to talk to someone about it and read it in like a couple of days absolutely loved it it's um it's a it's a coming of age book set in the US uh, following a girl called Betty um as she grows up so you see her as a kid then you see her as an adult and it's just it's shocking and upsetting and funny and full of love and it's just a really brilliant book hope you found that video useful let me know in the comments down below what you learned about production from this video